Hi, I'm Laura Harrier and I am doing Breakdown Breakdown with Cosmo. I am going to be reliving some of the most dramatic moments of my career and giving you the real tea on what happened. This is the trailer for Mike, which is the Hulu show that I'm coming that I'm in this coming out soon. And this was really intense, <laughs> but really fun to do. I'm playing Robin Gibbons, who was married to Mike Tyson um, in the 80s and is also a incredible actress and director in her own right. I haven't seen the show yet, so I can't say too much. Mike and Robin had a famously volatile, um, possibly abusive relationship, so it definitely was heavy material to work with, and trying to bring truth to that in something that was so sensationalized and in the media and in the tabloids, and I think, to be honest, did not paint her in a good light at all, and I think that it was really wrong. I think that the way that she was portrayed was completely sexist and unfair. So I just wanted to come into this with as much truth as I could give and try and tell their story as unbiasedly as possible. This is the intergalactic trailer. It was really amazing making this because it was during the full pandemic. So initially we were all supposed to be in a room together doing the lines and actually acting together. Um, but because of the pandemic, we weren't able to do that. So I was just alone in a sound booth reading with somebody and they filmed my face and then my face went into the incredible people who do the computer art, everything. I don't even know how this works, to be honest. So my character, Carmen, her face moves like mine does and she has hand gestures like me. And so it felt like I was watching myself when I saw it, but it was so weird because I was like, wait, but I, I didn't do these things. It's, it's really bizarre seeing yourself as a cartoon. It was so weird doing dialogue without a scene and a partner because I, I don't know, I didn't really have any like, barometer of how things were going, I guess. I did have someone I was reading with in the room, so I was able to like sort of act with somebody, but I wasn't like a cartoon me running through New York City. I was like Laura in a sound stage in LA just reading lines, so it was, it was cool how it came together though. So this is Hollywood. This was really sweet. Yeah, it was really like, um, I don't know, I, I just loved the people I was working with on this show, especially my friend Jeremy Pope. I love you, Jeremy. Um, and it was funny, like, fake winning an Oscar as an actress, you know? Because <laughs> you're kind of like, this will be cool, but <laughs> this isn't real. But it, for me, it was more, honestly, this felt really special just because my character, Camille, represented um, all these women, all these black actresses who really never got their full shine in Hollywood. People like Dorothy Dandridge and Lena Horne and all these women who are so talented, but the, obviously the times didn't let them achieve their full potential. Thank you to the Academy for making sure that no little girl staring up at that screen will ever again be told that there are limits to what she can achieve. For me, I was just kind of wanting to pay homage to them, pay homage to all the women whose names we don't know because they didn't get any opportunity. Yeah, it was fun to stand up there and hold that statue and wear a dress, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and the costumes were amazing. Hollywood, it was so fun. Everything was like actually dead stock 40s vintage and I don't know, I liked my hair. I remember that dress, I was sort of like taped into it and underneath that dress was just like duct tape all over my body and it really hurt taking that off at the end. Oh my God, this scene is so intense. Why did you guys pick this scene? Okay, Black Klansman was probably the most, maybe the most important thing I think for me that I've done just because it really kind of changed my life in a way working with Spike Lee and being in a film that was nominated for Academy Awards and stuff. Like I got to go to the Oscars and it was in a movie that was nominated for Best Picture. It was really surreal um, and a huge honor. Just, I'm, I really can't believe that still ha happened. It was amazing. I loved filming this. We did like this whole Soul Train line and the way that they positioned the cameras in the scene, you, we couldn't see them anywhere. So they were like all hidden throughout the room. So it literally just felt like you were in this Soul Train party in the 70s. It was so immersive and so fun and cool. Cause it was intense, the subject matter that we're talking about and that time period and what it means. But I loved it. I haven't seen this in so long, this is so funny. Oh my God, <laughs> we, we had to do all this choreography to like learn for this dance, which I forget now, is some, it was like what, <laughs> whatever this was. But we had rehearsal with this choreographer and Spike would come and he'd be like, dance, 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 and screaming at everybody. In a, 
encouraging, friendly way, but it gets intimidating. <laughs> Why are you guys playing this one? This is a music video I was in, and a friend of mine, Sarah, directed it, so I wanted to work with her, because um, I think she's talented and sweet and good. This actually, I remember, was like my first job in the pandemic. Like, I think we shot this like, I don't know, May or June of 2020. And I remember being like, I'm so happy to be at work. <laughs> I'm just like so relieved to be on a set. Like I probably would have done anything. Like I, but this was really fun because I just danced all day. And we shot at one of my place, favorite places in LA, this um, place called Flamingo Estate, which is a beautiful house and they do events and stuff there. And I think I'm dancing at a bar spraying champagne at one point. It's a, it was a good day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really what I expected for my career, but you know, you gotta be a video girl sometimes, right? <laughs> Spider-Man was my first movie. It was so insane. Like my first film was being in this giant Marvel movie, something that people love so much and kind of stepping into that whole world of Marvel and of Spider-Man and working with Tom and working with Zendaya. And it was a great experience. I'm just, it really kind of gave me my launching pad for everything. I guess we're moving to Oregon. Mom says it's nice there, so that's cool. Anyways, Dad doesn't want us here during the trial, so. Liz, I, I can't do that. Hi, Peter. Whatever's going on with you, I hope you figure it out. Still, most of the time, like if people come up to me or fans or anything, it's always like, aren't you that girl in Spider-Man? It's like, yeah, I've done some other stuff too, but yeah, no, thank you. I'll like be identified as that forever because it's so universal and so beloved. I was living in New York at the time. I was like, I'm just gonna gotta go to LA and do a bunch of auditions. I did a million auditions. I think I was in LA for, I don't know, a few months. and was just like doing as much as I could. I hadn't worked yet, really, besides this job that, that nobody ever saw. Then I got the audition. It just said, like, untitled Marvel movie. Did it, didn't know what it was for. I got a call back. And then finally I had a screen test with Tom. And then I think I waited six weeks to hear something. So I just went back to New York and was kind of just, like, sitting in my apartment going crazy for six weeks because <laughs> just waiting for the phone to ring. When it did, it was with good news. Then I just kind of went to Atlanta and was thrown into this whole crazy world. Like they don't tell you anything ahead of time. So I was going into it thinking I was kind of just playing, like, side character. But then being the love interest at home, Coming was like a huge surprise when I finally got to Atlanta and read the script for the first time. It was not what I thought I was signing up to do. So that was cool. Something really embarrassing that happened to me during the screen test. The scene with Tom was something about like, I was trying to get him to go somewhere. I was like really into it, you know, like, I really wanted to get this part. So I was like yanking Tom's arm like really hard and I scratched him and he started bleeding during our screen test. I have no idea how that happened. And like he had a scar from it. It was um, a really great first impression. <laughs> He's human. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've had to cry. I feel like if it happens, it happens. I don't know, I'm such a baby too. I cry all the time. So it's really like not hard to get me to cry. <laughs> it's pretty easy. It's like instant waterworks. So um, yeah, people are always like, can you cry on cue? Like, yes, I've been doing this my whole life. That's how I got what I wanted. It's funny like watching yourself. I really don't like watching myself. It's really hard for me to like watch things that I'm in. So that was a nice little memory lane walk. Yeah, it's just, it's really cool to be reminded of everything and it makes me really grateful for all the opportunities I've been given. Thank you Cosmo, thanks so much for watching.